Hey everyone, welcome to our 43rd, I think, episode of Brew Talk with Mr. Beer. My name is Robert, your host for today. It will just be myself for today's show, no guest host this week. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this. Hope you learned something new today. Before I dive into today's topic, uh, a few housekeeping notes. Um, make sure that if you like the post, share, comment, enjoy, you know, do whatever. Do whatever it tells you to do on the platform you're watching it on. That's really helpful for us. Also, comment anything you want to see us talk about in the future, which is awesome. You can also send emails to customer service. Go in the chat, chat with them. Um, just let them know what's going on, what you want to see us talk about. Um, also, if you haven't done so, join our Facebook group. We've got some cool things going on in there. We're offering some unique content in there as well. And it's you know an opportunity for you to get more uh, connection and time with the people here at Mr. Beer, like Zach and Ashley, who do an awesome job in that group. Um, also, we launched a uh, brand ambassador program. So if you are unfamiliar with that, uh, go to uh, mrbeer.com, scroll down to the footer, and there'll be a brand ambassador slash affiliate program that you can sign up for if you want to do that. So if you love Mr. Beer and want to earn a little a little side gig from uh, you know promoting products and stuff like that, we kind of set that up for you guys because um, we have some of the most loyal and awesome customers that a company could ask for. So I'm going to try and give back a little bit and kind of make it a little exciting um, for them as well. What am I drinking? I'm pretty sure it's American Lager Deluxe Refill. I'm not 100% certain on that because it was just in the fridge back there. It didn't have a label on it. So I think that's what it is, though. All right. So today's topic, I don't have a script. I didn't prepare anything. I'm just going to kind of wing it so you got to bear with me here. Uh, basically, our topic is going to be the best way to force carve your Mr. Beer home brew. So I think the most tedious part, in my opinion, of brewing is the bottling process. It just takes a little bit of time. I think it takes forever. I'm not a huge fan of bottling, just just kind of a time suck. And it's just, but it's something that you have to do. You got to, you know, you got to drink your beer, so you got to bottle it. So it's one of those things that you just have to do. But you can also force carve your beer into different things. So there's some different kind of kegs and options out there that you can choose from. So we're going to kind of dive into those. I brought some examples of what we have here in the office. Um, so one of these, we haven't used it in a while, um, but these are mini kegs. I think I saw someone uh, post about this in our Facebook group. Basically, you put your beer in here. Uh, you can like naturally carbon here. I was talking to Zach before we started. You can naturally carbon here. They have a tap down here where the beer comes out. Um, but I was also doing some research online and, I, and we have them here, but I couldn't find them. But there's a, a tap you can put on top of these things and you can hook a CO2 cartridge into them. They kind of do like the small, the small size ones and then it'll force carve your beer. You can have beer on tap. Just make sure that you're getting a thick enough one that can hold the CO2 pressure. Uh, you can find these on Amazon and a bunch of other places like that where if you want to do that, they hold about a gallon. So you need about two of these to force carve your beer, carve it up, put it in the fridge, you are good to go. Uh, pretty cheap solution or a pretty cheap option for you if you want to spend a lot of money and want to try it. Um, I know every once in a while you get some issues with some leaks and stuff like that, but I think that you know once you kind of get the process down, you would be pretty good at it. Um, another option we have here, a little more expensive, and these are pretty cool. We used to sell them on the website, we no longer do. Uh, you can find them on Amazon though. So the UKs from Growlerworks, uh, good company, pretty cool guys over there. Um, but basically, I mean, it's a force carb beer. It's like a, basically it's a growler that you can force carb your beer in and dispense it on tap. That's pretty cool. So this is the gallon size that they do. Uh, basically, you know, what, what I recommend doing is once you're ready to bottle your beer, uh, get like a tube, make sure this is sanitized and clean, all that stuff like that. You're going to transfer it into here. Uh, the CO2 cartridges all go on the inside. I think you line a few in there and you can force carb your beer. Usually force carb, you want to let it sit for like 72 hours to, uh, let it pressurize, they got a PSI gauge, and you got beer on tap, put it in your fridge, you're good to go. They do two sizes, the gallon and the half gallon size. When the gallon size, you only need two of them. Uh, they are a little pricey though, so. That's the only thing there with that one. And then I think the best option is what we do in the office here is we use a corny cakes. This is a, uh, actually I think this is a gallon size, but also three gallon size is what I'd recommend. And what we usually use here, we just have this one floating around that. Everything else has beer in it, so I don't wanna hold something that was, full of beer, um, but yeah, these are pretty simple. I mean, you do the same thing. So you sanitize your keg, you get a tube, fill it up from your fermenter in there, you know, and hook it up to your gas and, and let it force carb. Uh, the only thing with something like this is you would need a CO2 um, container. So usually, you know, about that size and a regulator and some lines and stuff like that. It's pretty easy to set up and build, you know, your own system. Um, and it really works cool. I mean, I like the force carbing for uh, like, lagers and IPAs and pale ales and all those things that you kind of want to drink quick so you don't lose that hop flavor. I mean, if you're really wanting to like age like a big barrel stout or a big stout and you want it to let it age, I mean, you can 
you know, obviously force carbon to let it sit, but usually like those we'll just put in bottles. I mean, I know when we make like our big stouts, like the Gamma Yoon or like the Lock Stock, we'll usually just bottle those and let them just condition on their own, do their own things. That kind of helps longer. But if we're trying to test like some new IPA, some new pale ales, we'll keg them up and force carbs. So that way our beer is ready to drink in like three to four days after bottling versus waiting two weeks for it to clean up or for it to carbonate in the bottles. And also obviously conditioning, if your beer will still condition in the kegs. So once you force carb, you're not gonna lose any of that conditioning things. You wanna let it sit for a little bit longer. That will obviously optimize the taste because you just you know, from your keg, if you force carb it and then you drink it and it tastes green, it just needs a little aging and you're good to go. Um, I think that's it. So I'm going to wrap it up for today. Thanks for watching. Um, join our Facebook group if you haven't at, if you haven't joined already. Answer the three questions. Uh, there might be a coupon code in there. We're also posted some other cool stuff on there. It's just a cool place to hang out. Uh, if you guys have any questions about carbonating your beer or wanting to like force carb your, your home brews, send us an email or send us a chat through customer service. It means Zach and Ashley will be glad to help you out. Um, and also a great option even for, you know, the, the corny kegs is you can build your own keg writer. I've seen a lot of people putting their uh, fermenters in mini fridges and hooking them up to like an ink for a temperature controller to maintain the proper temp during fermentation, which is awesome. You can get those fridges for really cheap at like Walmart and stuff like that. You can also convert those into, you know, a keg writer for, for pretty easy. I mean, there's kits you can buy online that will come with the tap and the drills and the parts that you need to drill a hole, set it up so the lines are right and make sure everything's good to go. And, and there's nothing like having beer on tap. I mean, it's it's... It's pretty cool and it's pretty fun and you know it makes it easy to uh, drink and enjoy and share with uh, your friends and family. So appreciate you guys joining us. Hope you guys have a great weekend. Enjoy some home brews this weekend. I mean, it's Valentine's Day on Friday, Valentine's Day weekend. You know, maybe give a little love to some home brews. Uh, cheers, guys. Have a good one.